friends and family of the show, welcome to Born Under Punches, um, the show where we talk about stupid things and, um, in this case, rant about stupid things. Um, so here joining me tonight is my co-host, Kelly, who is definitely not the brains behind this operation and definitely does not um, totally run things from behind the scenes. Come on out, Kelly. Nicole, I could not have put it any better myself, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was an introduction that you would uh, get behind. Um, so how's it going? How are you doing today? How's things? Uh, it's going great. Uh, I love technology. This time it was my fault um, that uh, we were playing, the The theme was playing through my computer twice because I'm also watching the stream. And I spent a long panicked minute trying to figure out why I was doing that. So if you were wondering why it stopped for no reason, it's because I thought everything was lost. Everything is fucked. We're getting canceled. We're getting taken off the air. <laughs> I was wondering that. I uh, just always assume the worst when it comes to this show, um, which I think has been a fair analysis so far. Yeah, well, I mean, I like to keep standards low because let me tell you, in two years, when uh, when we finally figure this out, we are going to blow people's minds and uh, just absolutely shatter their low expectations. Mm -hmm. um, so, Kelly, have you ever taken public transit? Have I ever taken public transit? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely have taken it. Uh, I definitely talk a lot. Like I take it more than I do. Um, cause it's important for me to sound like, um, that I have values and that, you know, like, you know, I, I can live without a car. So why can't you when in reality, uh, it, it's just an asphalt hellscape with, uh, with no escape. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, sorry, I was expecting a yes or no, and uh, your long description of why you take public transit kind of threw me off. But okay, I blew it. No, it. no, like let's try it again. Ask me again. Um, Kelly, have you ever taken public transit? Hell yeah! <laughs> Perfect. Not a yes or a no, but even better. I appreciate the enthusiasm. Um, so what would you say is the worst thing about buying tickets for the transit? Like, what is the thing that you say, would say is like a barrier that like is like hard to like pay for your transit? Uh, you mean like other than the fact that the way we have to do it would shock like a feudal serf as being <laughs> like horrendously backwards and out of date? Or, or yeah. is that what you mean? Yeah, besides that. Like it's specifically like, so say your city was to implement a new system where you can yeah. pay with your phone um, at, when you were getting onto the transit. Mm -hmm. And you were like, whew, I'm so glad now I don't have to. Like, what's the first thing you think of? Like, the, first, the first thing I would think of if my city implemented that? Yes. I, I would be like, how did I end up in another country? Which country is this? And uh, like, what is the main language that they speak here? Do I know it? Okay. Well, you're not okay. I'm not getting the answers I want to my leading questions, so I'm just gonna go into. You gotta send me the answers ahead of time. <laughs> I'm not gonna send you the answers. That's insincere. Wait, no. I think I know this one. Ask me again. What? Okay. What is the thing that you would if if your city implemented a system where you could just pay on the bus by tapping your phone? What mm -hmm. is the thing you would think is wow? Now I'm so happy. Now I don't have to. Hell yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> so. Calgary, I noticed on the bus the other day that um, the gentleman that came on behind me was um, using his phone and he tapped on this little machine. Calgary now has a thing where you can tap your phone or scan something on your phone and you have the ticket on your phone and you, that's how you pay for your thing, which I was like, great, awesome, amazing. I'm going to immediately download this app. So I download the app <laughs> and what it says is, welcome to your Calgary Transit My Fair app. Never stand in line when purchasing your my fare tickets. Which I was like, who wrote that? Who thinks that the problem with buying transit tickets is waiting in line? Like it's not like Black Friday, it's not like concert tickets. 
my it's not problem, like they're handing out government cheese or like your monthly bread ration. <laughs> it's like I was just like, it's the the issue is not that there's the there's one person in front of me at the 7-Eleven buying a lotto ticket. It's getting to the 7-Eleven when I have to take transit there and there's no 7-Eleven on my route home. So I have to use a transit ticket to get to a 7-Eleven and get back. Like I just like I felt like it was a little. Whoever wrote that as the opening line to the app has no idea what problems people that are taking transit uh, were having. They were just like, ah, people are just impatient. They don't want to wait in line to buy their transit tickets. But like, does the app work? I don't know. I haven't used it yet. Okay. <laughs> but we're but we're just like we're we're still stuck on like upset about like the the copywriting. For the technical yes, writing. I yeah. My problem is that that's the way that they're marketing it to people is a good thing to use. Is like clearly people are just upset with the time that they were spending. But I'm like, no. The problem is that it was totally inaccessible to. It's like totally inaccessible to go out of your way to buy a train ticket. And B, it's like money is just becoming more and like cash is becoming more and more obsolete. And so having change to scrounge together to take the bus is like nigh impossible for people like me who cretins like me who use credit card for everything anyways yeah. that well, maybe maybe i'm just like maybe i'm being too salty about this and i should just be grateful that calgary has this now but i just it just feels like a marker of how out of touch whoever is in charge of the transit system is no it's a good point and i'm glad you brought it up because you know who loves to talk about Calgary Transit. Giselle General? Uh, maybe. Do you want to call her up and see if she'll come back on? <laughs> maybe next week. Um, I yeah. I now having... I'm not getting the answers that I want. <laughs> I was having a total Gi Giselle General um, interview flashback moment, um, which is very fitting because our uh, guest this week is also a former council, city council candidate, um, an activist, a university student, and a, I wrote down activist twice. Um, <laughs> But that's because he's twice community, as much of an activist as anything else. Community you know? organizer. That's true. Yeah. And community like, organizer um, was the other thing I should have wrote down. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's bring out our guest, Haroon Ali. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. You got, you got more moves on you. I don't know why you're putting around. pressure on our guests to have more moves when I've been doing the same move <laughs> literally every week for six weeks. I mean, I feel like we deserve credit because we actually told the guest about doing the dance this week uh, when normally we just kind of let them flounder. Mm. I appreciate the heads up. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Haroon. Um, do you have any thoughts on public transit in Canada and specifically in Edmonton? I do actually. What's called? I want. Yeah, I thought we were talking uh, about Calgary. What? Uh, you I know, thought I'm, we brought her Calgary. on specifically to talk about Calgary. Yeah. Calgary. I think you guys got the wrong city council candidate here. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the things I've been loving about Edmonton is that we got this new little card. It's called our card. So uh, basically, with these little cards, I can hop on any train, bus, anything I want. Tap it. Uh, one of the good things too is that I am a University of Alberta student, so I get a U pass. So I only have to pay 180 bucks in a semester, and I get to hop on public transit. But one of the bigger things for me, and this is something I ran on when I was running for city council, was that public transit should be free. Public transit, I think, is not something that should be charged, because the problem that we have, and the problem that major cities around the world have, is that people don't want to take transit. The incentive is not to give out these cards to people, being like, cool, pay, pay us... Uh, and create a pay-as-you-go system. I think the alternative is that we have a free public transit system. People can rely on, people can use when they want to. And by doing so, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be actually lowering emissions. We're gonna actually be making sure that we're getting, we're gonna actually save money too, in a sense, because now if there's less vehicles on the roads, that means less money spent on road repairs. That means less money spent on who knows what. <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, what's called public free public transit makes good sense. And I think it's something that we should be looking at too. I know lots of cities across the United States have actually implemented these plans. And I hope Edmonton does it soon. Cool. Yeah. yeah oh, and I, actually, I, go ahead. 
Sorry, fun fact, actually. Uh, the Boston mayor who got elected, oh, she actually ran on free transit. So oh. I'm hopeful to see maybe Boston be the ma uh, first major city in North America to do it. Cool. Yeah, I was not aware that they were implementing that in the States anywhere. That's fantastic. So, Hi. like, what kind of... Uh, let, let's, I'll, I'll fill in this context a bit for you know anyone that watches that may not know. So you ran uh, as a city council candidate um, in uh, Ward Papasteo, right? Yes. Okay, good. I, it's a good thing I didn't forget because that was my ward. So you, uh, yeah, you ran you ran in our ward, and uh, so like the free transit was part of your campaign, right? Yeah, it was a so cornerstone of the campaign. Yeah, so what kind of responses did you actually get from people like when talking about that? I'll be honest, free transit was one of the less controversial ideas on my platform. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you think about think about it like this, imagine uh, what's called, um, if someone came to you with a radical platform, free transit was kind of on the bottom of that list, <laughs> luckily. So it kind of slid mm -hmm. without pass, but... I think a lot of folks know it's time for free transit. Yeah, you know I mean, and at the end of the day, it doesn't make sense to essentially, we're losing so much money on public transit. Why not make it a free public service that people can rely on? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, even for me, I don't even understand the need to have transit peace officers running around transit at nighttime, kicking folks out of the shelters, kicking them back out into the cold. It's, once again, we're, we're expensing money that we don't actually need to, when instead we could be actually investing money back into the system to make the system better, to make the system reliable. We can be spending this money on oh, shelters. We can be spending this money on giving people uh, rapid housing, getting people supportive housing. But once again, it kind of goes back to mismanagement of our priorities. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I... Um... I think especially too, that's this idea that like some people don't, I mean, this happened, this is for lots of things, but some people don't deserve that. Like, oh, I have to pay for it or I have to earn my right to do these things. So like, you know, other, like if you're not paying for it, like why should I have to pay for someone else to do those things? And then also I think Alberta too has a bit of a driving culture. And so, yeah, um, we have a bit of a driving culture. And so it's, I think it's, it's kind of built in there. And so a lot of people are like, well, I don't take transit. So why should I, my tax money go towards that? That's why it's part of so it's such a problematic thing to bring up. Or exactly. and, and, and the irony in this too, is that, and this is something that has always, always made me chuckle. Uh, what's called is that essentially every single time we talk about cost sharing different things, the first thing that people bring up is that they immediately say, why should I pay for it? Like you said, but we co-pay for so many different things and co-paying makes better financial sense. Why should we bankrupt someone with a, let's say hypothetically, and this is one of the reasons why I'm very thankful that in Canada we have public health care because I should, if I get a $30,000 bill in what's called health care bill at once, that could very well bankrupt me. But over my lifetime, if I'm paying 50 bucks a month into a health care fund and I have an accident, that's what it's there for. It's to make sure that people can actually survive. And yes, does that mean the rich are going to pay you more? Of course. But at the end of the day, you know, what I mean? it's about paying your fair share, and it's about helping everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, the government equivalent of Josh's mom stowing his a little bit of his paycheck away every month so that he can uh, be able to retire when he's, you know, a decent age. Smart. Josh's mom is is saving that money for him. <laughs> yeah, she's a wonderful lady. Uh, I um, so, go ahead. So, like, yeah, on that note about um, because, like, I mean, a lot of the arguments you're making, I mean, to me, more or less, you're preaching to the choir. If you, especially when, you know, the, as you've alluded to, there's, um, there's so many of these uh, situations where you can point to it and say we're wasting money. Uh, it costs like all of us collectively in the wrong, in the long run, more to do it the way we're doing it. Uh, than it would be to try this new quote unquote radical thing. Um, one I'm you know intimately familiar with is that you know all of the downstream costs of homelessness uh, they add up to more than it would cost to simply house someone. And so you would think kind of the you know just based on the way you're presenting the argument that that should win over the fiscal conservatives right there. Like you're not even getting into the, the, you know, the morals of ending homelessness or you're not even getting into 
um, just the, the emotional idea that like a city should be accessible. Uh, but as you probably know, people are still resistant and it almost seems like uh, I'll use the example of homelessness. You can make that um, very like financial numerical argument to people and they will kind of like solemnly nod their head, but they'll still find a reason to be against it. And to me, like me, I don't know if you'll agree, but it feels like often on their end, it's a moral argument that like they have this internal idea that like, well, you can't just give someone a house for free, right? They have to, you know, pick your argument. They have to work for it. And I think that is kind of how people are with transit too. The, why should I pay for something I don't use? They're, they're not, they're not wanting to see like the financial balance sheet. They just, it, it's like, uh, they're operating on kind of like a moral and emotional level there. So, like, would you kind of agree with that or? Yeah, no, and no, and you know, I mean, for me, what's called um, this concept came to me very clearly. I, I don't know, if, I don't know if you, if you uh, or anyone has had a chance. Have, have you ever watched New Amsterdam? It's a TV show on Netflix. No. no. So it's about a doctor in New York. Uh, what's called he manage he becomes the medical director at uh, New Amsterdam, and basically he starts realizing that the uh, he he basically starts delving into the American health care system. But for one really good example was that they had someone that was repeatedly coming into the hospital. The reason why he was coming into the hospital was because he needed shelter. So basically what he was doing was lying to stay in a warm place, right? And what ended up happening was that he ended up racking up a $3 million bill, right? And unfortunately, uh, what's called, unfortunately, because he was unhoused, he didn't have insurance until the hospital had to assume that cost. So rather than, rather than letting him keep coming back, what they did instead was that they actually they actually got him an apartment. They got him a job working in the hospital as well. For you and and and, and so what I'm saying is that people some people need a hand up. You know, what I mean, like at the end of the day, I think it's our job as a society members to help people get the hand up. And at the end of the day, we shouldn't be punishing. We shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't be punishing people. We should be looking at ways and actually give them support so that they can actually learn something, so that they can actually do something. And once again, it's not our, it's not our responsibility to shove it down people's throats. It's our responsibility to show it, I guess, <laughs> in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, I guess my question on that note is, you know, again, like everything you're saying makes perfect sense to me. It's very, like, I'm on board with it. But I, it sounds like when, when you are trying to put those pitches to people like to a voting base in the real world you still encounter a lot of resistance so like is there something you've learned so far through activism and community organizing in terms of like well what is going to change someone's mind in terms of the messaging because like a lot of people have been making those very well thought out detail oriented uh arguments that like this is the right thing to do this is a cost effective thing to do this is a more you know efficient thing to do this will this and that and it doesn't it it still seems to like reach a limited group of people so like have you have you found ways that like you can kind of reach the undecided or that you can sway people who are resistant or on the fence that's kind of my question yeah, uh, you know, what I mean, for me, what's called something I even noticed at the city council campaign was that something I continually talked about was policing, police funding. Uh, you know, what I mean, I chatted with a lot of folks about this, and and this is something that a lot of folks, especially in some in the suburbs, weren't too happy about. And actually, I even got threatened about. Uh, someone decided to threaten me about it, saying that he's ought to bash my head in for thinking of an idea like that. But you know, what I mean, so there's people like that, obviously. But uh, there's also other people, too, that are willing to actually have a conversation. Like, the people that are not willing to have a conversation about their views, it's useless. Like, I would suggest not even wasting your time with that. There's, like, you can typically tell this in about five minutes, less than five minutes, and having a conversation. There's also, also, I think there's also another group of people, too, where people, like, they have an idea. It's just a flawed idea. And they, they want to learn. They, wanna, they, they, they know better to an extent. They just don't know how to express that. Finally, I think there's people that are undecided, you know what I mean, where people don't really have an opinion on the issue. So for me, what's called my main target, it was actually ironically never the undecided. It was always the people that were in the middle. Because I think at the end of the day, you know what I mean, if you can convince those people, undecided people, 
are simple. You know, <laughs> it's really simple to get your point across and to have these conversations too. But for me, when I knocked on doors, I had tons and tons of conversations. Even volunteers, you know, I mean, like at the end of the, at the end of the time, what's called most volunteers. Some of the volunteers came in was saying they weren't too sure about my plan to what's called reinvest police funding back into communities. By the end, they were completely sure of it because at the end of the day, having a conversation with someone, having this, having an idea like repeated, having an idea actual logically thought through makes sense to people. I, I, yeah, I'd be interested if you wanted to talk more about the police reform thing because, uh, you know, like during the election, something that I noticed when I was going through the, you know, all of the different uh Ward Papasteo candidates and like one of the major reasons that I like truly genuinely uh, nearly voted for you was because you were the only person who Aww. mentioned the police. <laughs> I, and I, I, I kind of got sucked into the strategic voting feeling, but uh, of course, no, that's okay. I love <laughs> people did too, but no. <laughs> there was something no, you said honestly. earlier, Kelly, that I was like, that sounds like he's uh, telling on himself about not voting for our guest, but. Oh, I'm absolutely yeah, yeah. telling on myself, and I, <laughs> I could the... use, I could use that as a springboard to say this is why we should have ranked choice voting so that we can kind of like really put our favorite vote forward and then kind of, you know, strategize who we really want and don't want um, out of all the candidates. But I mean, maybe that's a whole other conversation because I do, I do want to hear like you expand on the police reform thing. If you yeah. Uh, no. Honestly, what's called uh, well, first off. Don't worry, I don't hold nothing against you, as long as you didn't vote for the conservative candidate. <laughs> but uh, no, when it comes down to the fact, you know what I mean? I think at the end of the day, when it comes to it is that police reform, and this is something that's been a big topic for the past couple of years. And I mean, like, we've had lots of conversations since George Floyd. We've had lots of conversations since Dante Wright. And at the end of the day, I think that it makes logical sense to look and analyze the situation. If we're dispatching a police officer to, self, to an unhoused person, is that an effective way to use resources? Or would it make more sense to get a care team with trained social workers to that person, get them to a shelter. If they don't want to get to a shelter, give them supplies, give them a blanket, give them, give, give them tools to actually live, to actually have basic necessities. You know what I mean? So that's, and that's something that I had this discussion with time and time and time after the campaign was that cost efficiency, you know what I mean? And this is something that's ironic because, you know, I, I, you would think conservatives, especially when they talk about tightening the budget, tightening your belts, they would talk about the police budget. But time and time after, again, no one's talked about the police budget. And in the past uh, four years under the past city council, the police budget increased 28%. And, you know what I mean? And it was actually scheduled to increase another... I think three percent, but uh, luckily, what's called uh, what's called uh, the other really strong police candidate in the, uh, what's called in this district, uh, Ward Papasteo, Michael Jantz, actually really led the charge on it, and he was actually able to convince most of council to uh, agree to uh, they they basically they defunded the free, the increase, so they didn't defund the police, and this is something that they're very highly mis. Conception, <laughs> and mm -hmm. actually, ironically, they ended up giving the police a, an extra million dollars too. But at the end of the day, at least they got somewhere. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you got to settle somewhere, I guess. So yeah, like because you mentioned uh, at least like the, the example of you know being threatened by somebody when you brought it up. Um, certainly, it's a divisive issue when it comes up with voters. Uh, with that being such like a visible part of your campaign platform being on your website in the election, did you have any interactions with like a anyone representing the police? Like, did they talk to you? Did they, was there anything happening there? Uh, nope. They, they, unfortunately they never reached out. I actually really hope they would. <laughs> uh, we actually, ironically, our team actually reached out to the police. We, we reached out asking if we could do what's called, if we could have a sit down, if we could have a conversation with someone from the police Unfortunately, they didn't bite. I think most likely this is because of what's called back in April. I was heavily, no, June. I was heavily involved with Black Lives Matter, even back in June 2020. And mm -hmm. even this year too, you know, I mean, I was involved in several different protests in front of the, in front of EPS headquarters. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing they, they're not my best friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm, I, can, I can be like Casey Madu and call the police chief and get one of my tickets waived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
That's actually, that was one of the things I was going to ask about, because I noticed you've been tweeting and sharing a lot of things about that. Um, do you want to, I guess, for anyone that hasn't heard yet, because that's fairly recent, um, do you want to maybe elaborate a little bit on what's what went on there? And Yeah. Uh, well, our good old friend, Mr. Madhu, got into some trouble <laughs> the other day. What's called, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Madhu decided to, uh, well, back in, no, not the other day, actually. This is a year ago. Yeah, actually, yeah, about nine months ago. He ended up calling the police chief because he got ticketed outside of a, in the school zone uh, near his home. And he, he allegedly said he didn't call the police chief to get the ticket waived. He called them to talk about racial profiling. Here's the irony in all of this. Once again, when Black Lives Matter said police are racially profiling us, Casey Madhu said, no, they're not. Now he's saying they're racially profiling. It's like he woke up one day and realized he's black. You know what I mean? Like it's for me, it was it, it was almost insincere because when the community when the community that elected him that had conversations, so many people from my own community, we actually, even though we didn't agree with him on policy and, and everything, we still wanted we still wanted someone to represent us at the cabinet table. And unfortunately, he sold us out. And the second he needed help, that's when he brought up that issue. So a little disappointed there. Well, actually, I'm not really disappointed. It's UCP at this point. You know what I mean? Like, I'm guessing for all of us now, this is just normal. <laughs> We're just waiting to see which next cabinet minister gets tagged. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I can imagine it would be a big shock to to wake up one day and realize you're black. I mean, that's never happened to me. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> if it was something you didn't realize before, I mean, like, he's how old, right? Like, that's... The longer yeah. you go on not realizing something, the more of a shock to your system it is. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. Were saying something important. Oh me? Oh, no, wait, I, I, I never say anything of... important. It was definitely you. Oh, I when don't I have a dumb joke, my eyes and ears just shut off, and I just kind of roll forward. So, I think that was good for me, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, like it. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned the 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 irony of a lot of things a lot of the time because i think that's uh that's something that really sticks out um in speaking to you is that um yeah because i mean you're you were the i mean the, the youngest candidate in the city right yeah i think yeah, the youngest, i was actually the youngest person to contest in the 2023 election 2020 no 2021 election cycle and i think quite possibly i was actually the youngest person to ever register to run because right. I somehow registered when I was 17. Okay. So what's called, uh, I still am looking into that, but uh, yeah. Yeah, because you're 18 now, right? Yeah, I'm 18 now. I'm turning 19 soon. Yeah. And I think like that's an interesting, I don't know, mirror to look into uh, because, I mean, I can't speak for both of us here, but certainly me, when I was 18, uh, I, and I mean this like truly and emphatically, I was a useless piece of shit, just an <laughs> absolutely, uh, awful human being, um, uh, who, yeah, didn't really offer anything to anyone or care about much. So yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of exciting and refreshing to meet someone who is like clearly already pounding the pavement for the stuff they believe in when I was like. I don't know, throwing up on bouncers at Funky Buddha or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I guess like, um, but what, yeah, what really sticks out like is your sincerity, your earnestness, your like how genuine you are. And I don't know, maybe you'll agree with me, Nicole, but I find that almost like it's a bit, it's tough to see because I don't know if you know this room, but the world it sucks real bad um and really <laughs> yeah and you know like people like us you know we've been around the block once or twice or you know 46 times and we've you know developed our our hardened outer layers and our defense mechanisms and you know most importantly our our sense of detached irony which is you know what i was getting at in the beginning so i i'm, I'm curious if you've been working on your your jadedness and your bitterness um which is i think is so crucial to uh to caring about stuff because hmm. if you're going to okay. get a head start on activism you got to get a head start on pessimism you know what i mean 
you know, ironically, and this is something that may come as a surprise. Well, not really. Most people know most people who know me know this is that what's called I think I'm actually one of the biggest optimists. <laughs> mm. Uh you know what I mean? For me, what's called I had you do not even want to know the first policy draft that we had. I swear it was it was a socialist utopian <laughs> right. fragment. And so I think I think at the end of the day, for me, what's called uh, I'm a very optimistic person. I I what's called I like to surround myself with pessimists uh, to kind of you know, well, you've done a great job tonight. Yeah, but I think at the end of the day, you know, I mean, hey, if we're not having someone looking out to, into the world being like, we can do that. <laughs> then who, how do we define what's possible? You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's something that like, I, th- I think a lot of folks don't understand about optimists is that I don't, I'm not someone that, I don't think I wouldn't say that I am, I wouldn't say that I'm like too hopeful, but I think at the same time, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm how do I put this? I'm carefully optimistic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to run outside with a ball and toss it in the air being like, it's not going to hit my head. <laughs> In that sense, because like ironically, and you wouldn't think, but there are some people that that I think are aren't careful when it comes to optimism, and that's one of the and that's one of the bigger problems that we have too, especially when it comes to politicians, because we have politicians who are I would say carelessly hopeful, and they promise outlandish things, and unfortunately, it doesn't come true. So once again, we got a community's hopes up high, up high, and we crush them. So. I always want to be careful, especially when it comes to that, you know what I mean? Because, like, once again, I don't want to be like Casey Madhu. <laughs> I, I love my community, so I want to make sure I'm making them proud. Mm-hmm. Now, just to backtrack a bit, are you telling me there's people who make promises during their elections, and then once they win, like, they don't follow through with them? Oh, God. Well, that sounds bad almost. That doesn't sound you right. should elect those politicians. Mm-hmm. I feel like, like I feel like they would get in trouble or get yelled at or face some kind of accountability for that, you know? Ouch. Uh, yeah, I mean, accountability they... <laughs> Go ahead. I think the only accountability they can face is themselves. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. well, like, once again, I don't know if you remember, uh, Mr. Kenny promised and he signed a public waiver too. And, you know, I mean, once again, any party that requires the, the leader to sign a public health waiver is probably concerning. But nevertheless, though, he signed it and lied. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, like, mm, not the best track record. Mm. <laughs> so if yeah. I'm picking up the subtle nuances here on the on the sort of pro anti Kenny camp, you're you're kind of leaning anti. Oh, a hundred percent. And once again, don't get me wrong. Uh, what's called, I think, at the end of the day, I think they're all horrible. But Kenny, especially, you know, what I mean, like, and I think at the end of the day, what's called, and, and this is something a lot of people. Uh, defer on once again i think if we're going to pay the lieutenant governor i think she should be able to do something <laughs> like I, I think i think at the end of the day i'm starting to get a little bit sick, sick and tired of figureheads uh i think at the end of the day if they have power they should use it you know what i mean like and at the end of the day i think at this point in time a majority of Albertans do not want kenny to continue and unfortunately the only way to remove kenny is through his own party Right. And the problem too that even if we remove Kenny, we're gonna get stuck with someone else. And I mean, we'll probably get stuck with uh, what's the guy's name? What's there's too many Jasons in that party. Uh, one of the <laughs> Jason Nixon. There's too many Jasons in general. Let's be honest. Like yeah, we could one? we could do with fewer Jasons. Yeah, exactly. Right, My God. Could. Especially in well, that party too. <laughs> Jason yeah. Nixon. Now, are you sure that this isn't just Jason Kenny wearing glasses? Because they look exactly the same. Ah, well, if, if Jason Nixon starts talking what's called exactly like Kenny, well, no, for sure. <laughs> I guess, yeah. It's hard to tell with these guys. Uh, yeah, and you're saying like you're, like you're 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 not into figureheads? Like you're 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 over that? Me? Yeah. Uh because I got real yeah. bad for news for you about uh, mm-hmm. who that lady on the money is. <laughs> I, 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 and once again, you know, what I mean, like, I think, I think it's better to have this discussion. You know, what I mean, let's wait a couple of years. You know, what I mean, like, who knows what happens? And you know, what I mean, and once again, most likely, I don't think Canada's like, I, I don't think we can. I don't think Prince Charles. And once again, this is just me being a hopeful optimist. I hope Prince Charles is not on any other coins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean. 
You've turned into a terrifying robot. Yep. Oh. Oh, now is that is that just me or is that you too? No, I could that was me too. Oh, sorry, my bad. My headphones decided to uh dip out. (laughs) But uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, that's great. No, you sound great. I'm just a little concerned that uh, your headphones are maybe being used as a listening device by Buckingham Palace, and they were just trying to like, you know, <laughs> cut your mic or eliminate you somehow. Ouch. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, name a single person member of that family that is not an upstanding citizen. But um... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I've tried real hard not to name one. I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm, like and once again, I'm kind of okay with Megan and Harry. Mm-hmm. I think I think they saw the toxicity and they're like, oh, nah, I'm good. So, like I'm kind of like I'm okay with them. I don't I don't mind them. Like once again, I think I think it's a little like this whole thing. UK runs in general is just bad bad politics. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, uh, I think at the end of the day, I hope to God that we don't see Prince Charles on a uh, coin. Well, I do agree with you, although I would push back on uh, your point about now maybe not being the right time to talk about it, because I think I think we're almost past that time, considering the Queen definitely secretly died like a month ago and they've been covering it up. But I honestly, I don't blame. I haven't. Has anyone seen her like in public, alive, walking? Uh, well, I mean, the, 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 the fun conspiracy theory is that she's dead and they're all like they, they were trying not to like shut down the country over Christmas announcing it. Um, but the much more compelling conspiracy theory that I saw online that I actually find uh, very plausible is that she had like a massive stroke, which is why they use that language about her entering a new phase as if she was some kind of like, you know, caterpillar. And uh, oh. she, or maybe she's turning into a monarch butterfly. Hey, you're right, actually. That actually makes a lot of good sense. That's one of the reasons why they can't bring her out. And if anything, who knows? Maybe Prince Charles is chilling chilling in the back, making decisions now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's been waiting a long time, to be fair. Yeah, my God. Like, <laughs> imagine what's called. Imagine if Aaron O'Toole was left that long to wait. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My God. Yeah. It's- Nicole, I hate to belabor the point, but can you deliver that punchline one more time when I talked about the queen uh, uh, transforming a caterpillar? Yeah, maybe she's transforming into a monarch butterfly. (laughs) That's better. Thank you. Yeah, they really hit different when we turned them down to 60% volume. So, Uh, yeah, so uh, that was uh, Soundboard Corner. We're going to move on from that. Uh, What were we talking about? That is just insane. I am still flabbergasted. You know, I actually never really thought about that. Yeah, I didn't either. But it, it kind of makes good, sense because it's good language too. And why would they use that language? Mm-hmm. Like, they had to have been using that language for a reason. You know, what I mean, it's like mm. I honestly like, hmm, damn. Well, if I was Trudeau, yeah. I'd be like, can I visit the Queen? <laughs> yeah. Well, as a lot of people, a lot more level-headed people have rightfully pointed out, is it's 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 absurd to think that um, you know if and when the queen dies that they would be absolutely floored by it and unable to figure out how to proceed because they've almost certainly been like having meetings and like drafting up war plans for when the queen dies for like 20 plus years now. Um, But something that's a little more unexpected is, well, what happens if this person is still alive, but now they are like, you know, they have a a palsy in their face and they don't, for somebody who's so, visible their whole thing is smiling and waving this person has an impacted ability to smile and wave uh you know now you can see why it'd be more like we got we got to hide her for a bit and figure out what we're going to do here because you know so much of that whole thing is image right yeah but yeah. i feel like that's kind of cruel in a sense you know what i mean yeah like, it's imagine- the rosemary kennedy thing exactly like i don't know like for me what's called like I want to feel comfortable dragging out my my ninety five year old mother, being like, "Come on, mom, let's go. You gotta take some photos in the crowd." You know what I mean? You can't mm. die yet. And like, here's the thing too. And I and I think and I think realistically speaking, I think most of the UK knows the second that Prince Charles takes over, that when that's like that's when the is it still called the Commonwealth? 
that uh, like we're we are part of yeah we're part of the commonwealth right <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> yeah that's when the commonwealth kind of falls apart you know what i mean like doomsday that's when their money walks away that's when the uk kind of loses its power and the second the uk loses its power uh it becomes a and once again, I don't think I'm once again, this is just me hypothetically saying is that the UK now reaps the be- reap, reaps what they sow. Yeah, they I mean, I, yeah, you definitely get the I, I think I agree. I think what you're saying is like, I, I feel like I like, I don't care about the Queen. I don't particularly like her. I don't lit- I really don't know anything about her because she just like, like Kelly was saying, she just smiles and waves. But I feel like she's been a figurehead for so long that we're just used to her now. And like, if she dies, we're going to notice. But if they're suddenly like, oh, this is your monarch now, all these Commonwealth nations are going to be like, "Mm, we were tolerating the queen. We're not ready for a new person. And that might be the point at which we like totally separate ourselves from them. And I think, and I'll be honest, I think that's for the better. Because once again, it has never made sense to me how one person can be the head of state for so many different countries. Trump must have been so jealous. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, I do agree been... with both of you. Uh, I also think you underestimate the number of extremely weird people who are obsessed with royals in various Commonwealth countries. That's, that's uh, you know, fair. I, mean... I do have several teacups that I've inherited from my grandmother that um, have are like coronation things or like this is from the royal wedding and this is when the kid princes were born and like several like more like why do i have so many teacups with the royal family's face on them well and look at like a supermarket tabloid like it's despite the fact that we you know live in canada like the all of the you know i guess like the harry and Meghan drama you alluded to like it's clearly interesting enough to enough people here that like you know hello canada as a very like specific localized magazine is going to devote every single issue talking to it so i think it will be interesting um how do you put it politely uh when she finally kicks it because the i think that response of "Hmm, maybe it's time to move on from this is going to come from like a solid 40 percent of people (laughs) and you're going to have uh a, an unfortunate number of people saying like well we can't we can't stop having monarchs on our money like it's tradition like you know <laughs> well i just finished watching for this. yeah i just finished watching the crown and if i learned anything from that it's that we need more monarchs does anyone else have a conspiracy theory that the crown was created in order to like bolster support around the royal family well i'll be honest that does make a lot of sense <laughs> that's I'm my that's my thoughts on that is that they because I someone I didn't really think about it until someone pointed it out and it was just like basically their their point was like there's a lot of things in here that the royal family probably wouldn't have like revealed and apparently they've like asked the royal family about it and I'm like I bet you they probably like in the same way that like the military like fun like helped to fund was it I want to say Top Gun but like you know, it was like, like any like major like action film that's about war is like probably a conspiracy by the American military to like bolster enrollment. But anyways, that's all. I mean, it's well, it's not a conspiracy. It's like literally a policy of if you want the U.S. military to provide you with like equipment for your movie, they have to like your movie. Uh, and you can you can look into pretty much any movie's uh, like um, production history of whether they got it or not um i remember reading an article about a whole bunch of them and uh like the reasons they would reject movies uh like i think there was uh i think there's a movie called like gi jane where there's like a scene where she has to go like piss with a bunch of male soldiers and they're all uncomfortable and the military is like well we're not going to give it to you unless you take out that scene because we can't have soldiers looking unprofessional and like really petty shit um the the one that I very specifically remember was uh, the movie Mars Attacks, uh, where like Martians invade Earth and like all of the Earth's militaries are hopeless to stop them, and they ended up. Uh, I think they killed the Martians by like playing Slim Whitman music or something. And the mu- the the military's like stated response for why they wouldn't provide financial support is 
you know, we can't we can't support a film that uh, is going to tell people that the U.S. military is like less combat effective than Slim Whitman. So <laughs> I wonder what they're I wonder I want to look up Tropic Thunder now and see if they got support from the American military. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. That is insane. Yeah, there's uh, um, I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't remember. I don't want to say things that aren't absolutely true, but I remember listening to people talk about there's sort of like a pipeline between people who um, like hold positions like high within like the U.S. Department of Defense and then also go to um, be paid as like at least creative consultants or like, you know, have production credits on like Call of Duty games. Uh, like there's there's like a direct connection between those things in that like the the U the Pentagon has uh, a vested interest in making sure that video games make like the military look cool uh and like that that's all out in the open like you can you, you don't have to to speculate about it there you you can see like who went from working for the government to working for these game studios so wow that sounds so cool it's cool and it's good yeah mm -hmm. this is this is how us uh us uh, jaded people interact with those things mm -hmm. yeah i yeah i definitely feel you there i'm constantly looking for and i mean to be fair i was i am do consider myself an optim optimist but i also am dating like a very i don't want to say pessimistic but like definitely realistic person maybe a little pessimistic and he's constantly looking like have you guys played that new game the wordle I haven't. I keep seeing it pop up on my uh, Twitter, and I'm like, I want to play it, but I am so, so, so unfortunately busy that I just want to get back and sleep. <laughs> That's fair. To be fair, if you're ever, if you ever want to play it, it takes probably less than two minutes to play, and it's only one word per day. So, um, but it's yeah. So it's a it's a, basically a game where you like you type it. It's a five letter word, and you have six guesses to get it right. You basically you guess a word. It tells you which of those letters are in that word. You guess another word and you keep trying to guess until you get the correct word. Um, and Ryan's response to that is, I wonder who created this. I wonder if they're mining some sort of information from this. I wonder <laughs> if it's like a conspiracy to like make autocorrect better. Like he immediately <laughs> was like, <laughs> which I mean, if that's the conspiracy, I'm on board because autocorrect stinks. But he was like immediately like, who is monetizing this? Why did they make this? What is going on? And one of our friends shared an article that was like, hey, some guy made this for his girlfriend because he thought it was cute. And Ryan was like, oh, <laughs> like, but that's honestly, it's where your head goes, right? It's, where's where's the money? Like, who's who's monetizing this? Who's benefiting from it? Why would you create this? Like, what nefarious purpose do you have? I mean, there are a lot of dark forces out there out to fuck with our spell checkers. Like, you know, that's been known <laughs> for centuries. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. pretty true. Although if we're coming, if we're cooking up new conspiracy theories, um, we we might say that uh, there's a cabal of people who are actively pushing to make sure that it's impossible to get all of your devices off of U.S. English uh, and onto Canadian English if it's even an option, uh, so that we'll stop you know using British spelling and stuff like that. They want to take our way or extra use. Yeah, I'll be honest. I never understood why. We just don't use, and like once again, like I, like I see no difference between color and color. You know, what I mean, like C L O, like O U R and C L O, C L O R. <laughs> I, I don't it feels wrong I, to spell it that way, doesn't it? Feels it wrong. Does, oh my God, it does. <laughs> My God, I've been, I have been wowsy. <laughs> Listen, that extra U is my birthright. You will pry that extra U away from my cold, dead hands. Okay, that's that's right. my position. All right, that that like, seems fair. <laughs> I I acknowledge that, and I will only you will only ever catch me saying this once, and I'll say it right now that American spelling is objectively better, but I will die on this incredibly dumb hill. Uh, I don't want it. I don't. I don't like their vibe, and I don't want their spelling. Just, just what if stop. it wasn't called American spelling? What? what if it was called Canadian spelling? But Canadian spelling, we like our U's and our centers with an R E. And but is uh, it really Canadian spelling, or is it British spelling? And if we're well, going to keep ties with the monarch, like you said before, should we actually be using their thing? 
<laughs> well, to me, to me, being Canadian is about being horribly confused over whether you do things the American way or the British way. And our spelling reflects that because uh, we, you know, like uh, I, I saw this pointed out once where in uh, in the UK, you would you would go take your car to like a tire center, which is T-Y-R-E and C-E-N-T-R-E. And Americans would take it to a tire center spelled with an I and an E-R. Uh, and Canadians, of course, have to split the difference so that like you know, switching my uh, spell checker to a UK English is like almost equally wrong. Uh, mm. And as Josh helpfully pointed out there, yeah, uh, you know, Canada is about splitting the difference in the work worst way possible. You know, it's like how you walk um, 10 feet, but you drive 10 kilometers. Like it should be baffling. It should be hard to remember which one you're supposed to do because that's that's all we have as a nation. <laughs> Just being confused. Mm -hmm. Confusion. I have this happen all the time. Like I'll be listening to Australians talk about like how weirdly uh, high the water in American toilets is. And I'm like, are we doing that? Or are we doing it the normal way? Like, and I, I like living in that land of confusion. Now nah, you confused me. I know. <laughs> Do we have, are our toilets weirdly full or empty? I, no, there's no way to know. Now I'm interested in that. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to have to find out tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Foreigners also say America's bread is way too sugary. And uh, really? do we have that problem? Couldn't tell you. I don't think a bread. I, I ate toast this morning with eggs. So I think I can pretty confidently say, I think, well, actually, how would I know then? It's because we're all used That's to. the thing. That's the thing about the toilets, too, is if you've never experienced the high volume toilets, how do you know? Or if you've never experienced mm -hmm. low volume toilets, what are our toilets like? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, those are a few things to keep you up at night. <laughs> my God, you have left me with more questions for myself than I did. <laughs> yeah, that's always our goal. Because it's 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 fun often, like when um you know when people make fun of Americans for uh their like you know hilarious quirks and like you know their obsession with like calling their university their alma mater or uh I don't know what else what's the other weird shit is that do? just an American thing. I think uh, it's too. I know. I, 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 actually, ironically, this morning I met with the alma mater society of uh, UBC. So like, they're kind of like the student union for UBC. So hmm. I'm pretty sure. Actually, let's just BC weirdos because the U of A has an alumni association, which is also like pretentious Latin shit. But yeah. Hmm. But with that being said, like I mean, you could fill in the blank with your own example of you know weird shit Americans do that you get to laugh along with. But then, you know, sometimes you have to sit quietly when you, uh, so one that came up for me recently was how, uh, how weird it is that uh, Americans don't use the parking brakes on their automatic vehicles. And I was like, oh shit, oh no. Everyone here does that too. But it is like, it is an insane thing to do in a way because the, the, the thing that like holds your vehicle in park is like the tiniest little chunk of metal and you should absolutely be using your parking brake. Um, and in, in some places like it's illegal not to use your parking brake when you're parked, even if you have an automatic, but here everyone's like, fuck it. It'll be fine. I do have a, yeah, I do have a counterpoint to this. Um, I dated a truck driver for a while and his advice to me was because I always drive old like beaters was that, a, you can't trust your parking brake when you're driving an old beater, and B, he's like, more than once, I've gone to use my parking brake, and then because it's so rusted from all the salt and, like, wet and grossness that our roads have, it sticks on. And so then your brakes are grinding, and... So what it's... you're saying is you should maintain your vehicle. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is you should never use your parking brake. Oh, no, I'm not. That's that is not a stance of the Let's show. Open up our next discussion. <laughs> <laughs> stance of the show: Never use any fe safety feature in your vehicle. Yeah, uh, I did want to ask. Yeah. <laughs> oh, seat seatbelts! Now that's a conspiracy. That's a, it's a conspiracy to make us soft. I went. I worked once with a guy that was convinced that um, seatbelts were actually more dangerous than not wearing one. Oh, mm -hmm. I have actually heard that a lot. Like masks, they, they hurt you more. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of folks have ironically somehow said that. And honestly, I've heard that from a lot of doctors too. You know, what I mean like and it's strange because I'm like But the seatbelts? 
yeah, they, they I remember what's called the, um, I, and I can't tell if he was joking or not, but what's called, I was, I was chatting with someone and what's called over Twitter and they had a doctor and the, uh, once again, this is Twitter, so probably not, but he was saying what he was trying to convince me how seatbelts damage you longer in the long term because they're compressing against you. And if you're, I don't know, but you know what I mean? And okay. at, at the end of the day, <laughs> Hey, well, because <laughs> you know what doesn't compress you at all is flying uh, 100k through the air and hitting the pavement. Like, yeah, yeah. but that's com compressing you, you like can, laterally. If you get launched like, through the windshield, you have time to think about it and then tuck and roll when you land. You know, it uh, the the seatbelt <laughs> takes away your reaction time, and like that's your freedom, right? It's your freedom to decide if you want to like try yeah. to do a blade pose when you get ejected on the highway. Yeah, yeah. well, and you know that's um. The whole point of your windshield is not to stop the wind, like not to shield you from the wind, but to shield the wind from you when you go <laughs> careening into it. It stops you from going out of your vehicle, right? That's a safety yeah. feature in itself. So why would you use a seatbelt? It's a perfectly yeah. good hard piece of glass right in front of you to stop you from careening out of your vehicle. Exactly. Yeah. And at that point, why even have a windshield? Why not just have a steel blade there? Yeah. And it's like you seatbelt, you go right through. Yep. Mm -hmm. protecting, the, protecting the elements from you exactly yeah that's just see and that's just environmentally friendly is if you yeah, get into a car I'm, accident like it's as far as i'm concerned it's survival of the fittest if you get into any accident whatsoever like like take you right out of it why don't we just make cars steal boxes yeah <laughs> on wheels <Well, Lilo's. laughs> i mean they basically are but yeah yeah. <laughs> um, yeah it's like i'm not trapped out here with the elements the elements are trapped out here with me you got it yeah, really, the seatbelt isn't protecting you from like the road and the other cars. Like the seatbelt is protecting the road and the other cars from me, because if I get my hands on them and you know my face and every other part of my body at the same time, it's going to be trouble for that, uh, you know, for that concrete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Definitely. all that blood and flesh is probably going to be bad for it. It'll wear it away eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a long game. What it's, an interesting we... turn. <laughs> I don't know how we got here. My God, yeah, walk well, someone the... human and be like, these guys are talking about seatbelts. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about yeah. safe importance of safety features on your vehicle. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, the asphalt might be, you know, on paper stronger than one of us, you know, maybe, but hundreds of thousands of us, eventually we're going to wear out that road. And exactly. that's precisely why, you know, untold countless people die in highway accidents every year because we have to keep up our war against the road. Exactly. And that's why conservatives say don't wear seatbelts. Because then we're gonna save money on road repairs. Actually, no, no, no. And actually, ironically, conservatives should say to wear see, I'm so tired. <laughs> no, you nailed it. They're all very ideologically consistent. We should just listen to them. So exactly. I'm glad we finally came to that conclusion uh, after an hour. Uh, you've you've won me over. Yeah. Speaking um, of staunch conservatives, uh, we should bring out our guests or our GM. Bring out our guest. <laughs> yeah, I sorry. thought he was here. I'm also tired. Or apparently. is the real guest Josh? Who's to say in this Inception world? Yeah, mm -hmm. let's bring out GM. It's a meme. Definitely a conservative pundit, and not a radical on the way to anarchist territory. Wait, was that your dance move? Like the one little pop up? What? No, that was me making sure I didn't fall out of my chair. I don't no, dance. Okay. So what you're what you're telling me is you're not dancing to the song. No, I'm I'm not dancing to the song. If we're all having bits, I might as well have the bit of not dancing because it requires less effort than your bits. Hmm. Well, we'll see if you're willing to stick to the bit. Can I just do a sponsorship for Red Bull instead? Yep. No. Oh, that's what's keeping me alive right now. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull, ensuring that at least 5% of our college students will have early deaths due to heart attacks. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> See, now this is why we had to wait. Guy. This is why we had to wait until now to bring Joshua because, like, this is advanced level blackpilling. Like, you're not ready for this yet. <laughs> you gotta start with being, like, a little bit detached. Like, it's one day at a time. You gotta work your way up. Yeah. It takes effort to be that, like, fucked up and checked out. <laughs> Just sorry, what's, what's the correct word that you would use, uh, uh, um, Josh? Like, a, a taku or? Oy, fey. 
I would say to that, trying to bring in that sort of shit. Well, we have a game to play today. That's true. Oh, yes. Uh, what game are we no, playing today? I should today? warn you, Josh, before you start with the game that uh, Harun did mention he may have to, uh, he may want to leave at uh, 8.45. So uh, really, whether he goes for that length of time or goes all the way till nine is, uh, he told me is going to be a reflection of how much he enjoys your game specifically. That's understandable, really. I, I, I strive for the best experience at all times, which is why I definitely wasn't rewriting stuff in the middle of your guys' talking because <laughs> I'm always prepared 100% for these things. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. That's why oh, we call you APJ. Are you sure you weren't at the Josh. Josh. I'm sorry. What was that? Uh, you have to ignore Nicole's terrible joke there. Oh, well, I, our our guest just died. So I mean, it means that I really na- nailed this game. Oh, wow, make- he hated it so much <laughs> that he couldn't even make like five minutes. Incredible! I think that's a new record, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did one of you kick him out? I didn't even go close to my mouth. So no, no. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, the. Pardon me, behind the scenes here, and uh, I see a black screen. So mm-hmm. I, I think something oh, died. The black well, screen is. You know Kelly's what that second. means. And we're back. Welcome back. My bad. I'm sorry. I think my MacBook twitched out. I'm going to quickly just plug it in just to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. No oh, you got to go, go plug your MacBook in? All right. Yeah. Mm. See, this time he wasn't back when I came back. Um, so with that being said, do you guys think this is a good time for the, the piss intermission? Jesus Christ, are you going to put another fucking the, banner on here? The piss intermission? Well, everyone wanted it like because it? they didn't like, yeah, they didn't like having to hold it during the game. Wait, wait, wait. the interpission? Yeah, I think we made that joke the first time, didn't we? Oh. Uh-oh. You know what, you know what, Nicole? I apologize. Why don't you, uh, why don't you just go ahead and, uh, Make that joke one more time. No. <laughs> I feel like sure? hurt. I've been burned one too many times. Sorry. Mm. Yes, I think it's time for the interpission. Oh. Crowd's not liking it, Nicole. Yeah, I yeah. didn't finish. Well, we did have them. Oh, God. And then we lost them again. Well, once 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 he appears, we'll start this. Uh, in the meantime, um, what uh, what's everyone drinking today? Oh, well, uh, I just, oh, are we doing ads? I mean, we might as well do ads right now while we wait. I mean, I already or, sponsored Red Bull, and I'm sure they're very yeah. happy with that plug. Yeah, they don't need. I don't think that Red Bull needs your needs your plugs. <laughs> I just went and grabbed a PBR because that's my life motto: PBR permanently be rocking. There you go. There you go. I'm pretty sure wasn't that a Bruce Springsteen song? No. Um, I'm drink- I was drinking a Hard Knocks Sun Up uh, Sun Up to Sun Down which is a banana brown ale um, and then I just switched to a Fitzsimmons Brewing Company Mad Queen Pineapple Sour Ale. Nice. That's a very a- good time. Yeah. I really like the banana brown ale. Highly recommend. Um, this one, it's very pineapple-y, which I like, but then it has a real weird aftertaste, so. I mean, it's like, it's like, is it like the sour's weird aftertaste, or is it just like doing its own really weird thing? No, it's just got like a weird, like, kind of earthy, like, and not in a good way. Like, it's, it's doing its own thing, for sure. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Um, well. Like, if you were to just drink a bowl of bloomed yeast... I mean, I'm not opposed to it, uh, because what won't I put in my body at this point? Uh, but tonight, I'm putting... <laughs> Do we want to speculate? <laughs> Actually, that sounds like a new segment. 
<laughs> yeah. What was <laughs> Josh put in his body? Do we have a banner for that? <laughs> we can make one. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, ideally a shank, I would say. I guess we're going to hide now it. Just, I was about to say, now you're just telling me how to live my life, which is a problem. <laughs> Oh, Aha! he's back. He's back. We don't have to do the bit. Perfect. Oh, no audio, though. We are, we're we're still sitting in the technical difficulties. Oh, you know what it is? Is the Royals have finally gotten to him. <laughs> they said, like, <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, they are trying to drive me back out. Unfortunately, oh, there we go. Unfortunately, they found out that I'm standing on University of Alberta property, so it seems like it's going to be a problem. <laughs> oh, boy. Wait, wait, does that work like an embassy? Like the university protects you from monarchs? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, technically, I'm in the student union building, so hopefully the student union would protect me. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. I feel like the royal family is all just vampires, so if you just create like a circle of salt around it... No, wait, that's yeah. demons. Just don't invite them in, I think, is the rule there. If you don't invite oh, them in, they can't enter. Yeah. Great. I have a nice door here. Hopefully mm. it will protect me. I think so. I mean, you're at least probably safe from Prince Andrew because I don't think you're his target demographic. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus, <laughs> I'm just saying though that if I'm if I'm going to trust anybody to be able to make to be able to make barricades, it's going to be university students at this point mm -hmm. uh, because they've gotten lots of practice over the last few years. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, you, you know, I have a soundboard reaction for my joke too. I should have used it. <laughs> yeah. You'll get better at it. You'll I feel better. like that was the reaction you got from us anyways, so. <laughs> Mixed laughter with like a ooh. Huh. This yeah. is true. All right. But now that we're back in business, nice and stabilized, we can get back to the adventures of the Atlantean Rangers. Oh, good. Hell yeah. Yes. My transitions are flawless. Mm -hmm. Well, so. I've learned that hell yeah is the only acceptable response now, so. <laughs> only the yes or no <laughs> questions. <laughs> so uh the first thing i'll get harun is for you to take out that little uh character sheet or even just a piece of paper to write a few numbers down for me awesome awesome let me just pull it up on my go. perfect oh. i don't know why this thing doesn't work on uh the stream yard i don't know why it doesn't work on uh safari it has to be very specific yeah i i don't know anything about mac stuff so yeah. All right. Uh, yep. Got a piece of paper out. Okay, cool. So uh, underneath the uh, stat labeled B for body, you're going to write a negative one. Oh, sorry. Oh, you want that, you want that stupid paper out. Give me one sec. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you turned a regular yep. paper. No, a regular piece of paper is fine. You just have to write uh, B and then negative one. Okay. B, the negative one. A U and then a two. M. And a P and zero. Okay. And those are just going to be your stats uh, okay. for this game. So, so now we've gotten that done. Let's uh, let's figure out what we're going to call you and what uh, what your story is here. So, do you have a name in mind for someone who would be from Atlantis? If you had to choose, there's no defined rules to this uh, to this Atlantis. By the way, I keep making them and changing them as things go on. Mm -hmm. Yep, we just need a name. Uh, just give me half a second here. I just got to write some stuff down here. Sure. Because uh, I just realized I have forgotten Kelly's character's name. I'm sorry. Oh. Could you could you say to, uh, could you say for the audience, Kelly? What's My your character's uh, name is yeah. Smegma Glands. Perfect. So we have Smegma. We have Gil, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Gil. To Dr. You? Gil. Yes, right, of course. Uh, and so, yeah, that's basically what we're going to be looking at for you to be uh, sort of making. We just need a, a character name, essentially, so that we're not just calling you Haroon the whole time. Awesome. Let's go Poseidon. Poseidon, oh, yeah. hell yeah. Just go for, yeah. straight for the big guy, hey? <laughs> Is that the last name? is like, yeah, I'm Steve Poseidon. <laughs> uh all right so there we go that takes care of that we got a name we got some stats 
And I have one more question for you to stretch these creative muscles a little bit to keep before we get going. Is um, Poseidon's going to be a resident of Atlantis that recently got screwed over by a president, the president of the city, um, for whatever reason. And uh, considering he seems to be part of an underground effort to sell off Atlantis's lands to American um, landowners, how do you think your character would have gotten screwed over by him? So, are we going in a circle? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 sorry, sorry. This is asking you right here. Uh, oh, me? Yeah, yeah. How would you think that your character would get screwed over by a land grabbing uh, government figure in the city? Uh, I would lose. There's definitely racial profiling yeah. involved, right? Oh my god! Absolutely, not... <laughs> absolutely, brother, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's just a given at these points in our lives. <laughs> Uh, Maybe it's like the what's the fucking name the guy in New York? They let him like redesign the city, and he like uh, like turn he like ripped up uh, historic black neighborhoods to put freeways in. I mean, that does sound. I, I can't remember the guy's name because my American history is unfortunately lacking because there's not enough swords involved. Oh, what the fuck is the dude's name? I'll get back to you. All right, but yes, okay. So we've got ourselves a land grab. Uh, land grab, lost, ah, property. Robert Moses, that was going to bug me. Oh, actually, I went, I went to the go look for a little look right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know, that would, that would be, uh, that would be my pitch. Basically, you lived in a nice, uh, tight knit walkable character neighborhood and uh, the new president came and expropriated all your land and put in freeways i mean that's it's it's got a good grounded realism to it which is what i strive for in my stories about giant robots and atlantean fish people uh but yes no that sounds good then so we've got ourselves pardon me uh poseidon a victim of a robert moses like land grab See, I, this is this is why I need to be uh, not producing because if you give me access to a screen with Wikipedia on it, I'm just going to be gone. I'm absolutely, like in a hey Jamie, can you pull that up? stupor. Yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. Joe Rogan's a terrible person. Nobody should watch his show. Yeah. Uh, D yes. Okay, so we've got that, and then I'm going to fill in a little bit of blank here. So Poseidon. <laughs> has recently joined the Atlantean Rangers as a attempt to help their investigation of this president because you've got a bone to pick with them. So that's all you have to remember. You fucking hate this president and you are little, you got a bone to pick with him the first time you meet him. Okay. So, with that, so we have Poseidon down. So that's character number 1. Now, we have two returning characters which are of course Dr. Gill and Smagma Glans. And we'll start with Dr. Gill. Can you give a quick recap for the, the benefit of everyone here about who you are since it's been a while? Yeah. Um, my name is Dr. Gill McGrawfish. Um, I'm a Southern businessman that exploits people struggling with mental illness. I host a TV show on which I shame people for profit under the guise of offering them psychological help. Um, I am really good at manipulating people so i have um my understanding stat is very good um but i don't actually understand how things work um so um yeah i have a negative psyche and uh oh in my inventory i have an expired license to practice psychology so all right so that's dr gill and now can we get uh, another word from smegma doing the same what what is smegma glands profile uh yeah sure so smegma glands uh i described i believe as uh generically handsome as i struggle to open it 
Um, the reference I used was he was sort of like an Atlantean Josh Hartnett. Uh, Haroon, I don't know if you need like more modern reference to go by. <laughs> uh, I gotta wow. know, maybe he's like a, an Atlantean uh, Andrew Garfield. Does that work? Shit, man, I don't know. I don't pay attention to what they could. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Actually, yeah, Spider Man, not this Spider Man, but the one before him. Wait, what's this Spider Man's name? Wait, Spider Man oh, in the kitchen? Oh. They're all called Peter Parker, Nicole. Yeah, no, the live action movies. Like, the Tom oh, yeah, I actually watched yeah. that. I watched where the three Peter Parkers came back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't watch Marvel stuff, but I assume that Garfield was in that one. Oh, yeah. he's the one with the big arms. Well, the one with the flappy things, right? With the what? With like the arm. Dr. Octopus? Arms. Yeah. Oh, that's just octopus. Uh, Garfield. Yeah. Is he the mad scientist? No, no, he's one of the Spider Mans. He's wait. The do you one know who Spider Man is? I do. Oh, I look okay. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's well, one of them. Just, yeah, just look at look at all of them because they're all kind of generically handsome at this point, except for maybe Tobey Maguire because he's getting old now. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's a bit ageist of you. And I'll keep yeah. doing it as I continue to age and look horrible every year from the age and not the terminal alcoholism. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so we've got our three characters established. We know what we're doing. Uh, it's very easy, the, the game system we're running today, so I'll just tell you what to do when you need to do it. And with that, let's look at my introduction, in which there is the Atlantean Rangers, sponsored by Red Bull. And PBR. And PBR. <clears throat> It's like a NASCAR outfit. Like there's there's stickers all over it for different ads. Hell yeah. The words spoken by a random goon have struck you in the days after the encounter. The man could have been lying, that's for sure. But he said it with such conviction. Watch yourself or I'll sick the president after you. As a result, you all find yourselves investigating leads regarding this potential connection. And a tip from a contact has finally borne fruit. Literally, in this case. You find yourselves at a communal garden in, a city, in the city park. It was once used for, well, communal gardening, where people would uh, talk and create communities around building, uh, building different garden structures, growing plants of, and fruits of different types, and generally just getting along. However, that didn't sit well with a local libertarian militia branch that's cropped up in the city recently because they believe that any public land could be more profitable as private land. As such, they have since pushed all these communal living people off the land and have set up shop there, charging tolls to use the gardening plots instead. Your tip has directed you that they may have a bit of knowledge about what the goons were talking about when they threatened you with action from the president. So, taking your new junior member, Poseidon, you go to investigate. And now, you guys are at the communal park. You see an unfortunate amount of people packing guns that they carry like they should know what they're doing, but don't really know what they're doing. They're just happy to be holding guns. Yeah, do we know if these are the type of libertarians that are libertarians just because they're like Harvard Law math nerds who forget what, you know, like human interaction is like? Or are these uh, libertarians because they're depraved perverts? Uh, I'm going to say those are the same thing, but no. Uh... <laughs> I appreciate that those are the two types of libertarians that you're saying, <laughs> like that they're allowed to be. Yeah, no, these are the ones that are scared of roads. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. so like the guy I work with. <laughs> yes. Right. Which is, of course, silly because as we've established, the roads are supposed to be scared of us. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, no, they're essentially the type that believe in only private property and uh, as such have taken great offense to communal land in the city parks. Oh. Huh. Okay. All right. So... I'm instantly excited by the idea of turning this into a private law. However, <laughs> I would like to use it. I would like to bulldoze the whole thing rather than charging people individually for the gardens and just build a skyscraper. 
and rent out the apartment buildings there. Um, so I'm going to walk up and try to persuade one of these gentlemen with guns to tell me who I can talk to so I can buy this property so that I can exploit it in that specific way. All right. Um, all right. So uh, you approach the, the closest looking goon um, who has his face covered with a handkerchief uh, poorly because he's just drooping because he sucks at tying it. And uh, he asks you what you want. Uh, listen here, young fella. Uh, I see this, uh, this space seems uh, pretty undeveloped. Um, and I, I think you guys could be making a lot more money here than you could than you are. Um, and I, uh, I'm actually interested in buying it. Uh, who, who might I talk to you about that? All right. So I'm going to get you to roll an understanding roll at this point. Oh, oh boy. Um... <laughs> Uh, we called it an interpition, but we could, should have called it an interdicen because I forgot to grab my dice. <laughs> Do you want me uh, to roll for you? No, it's okay. I'm going to use a website. She doesn't trust me. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> um, roll two virtual dice. I got. I, it. I can hold it up to the camera, Nicole. Like people can see the dice. Like I'm, I'm rolling for. Sorry, psyche. Understanding. Understanding. Sorry. Uh, okay. I got a seven. No. Nope. Oh, please. Yeah, seven. So you got a seven. So using your southern guile, you managed to convince this young lad that there is nothing to fear from him pointing in the direction of your leader. He points over to a small table with a one of those. If you ever had like a school lunch thing and they have that silver cash register box where they, they obviously aren't doing any real calculations. They just grab your money and toss into this haphazard mess of coins and bills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They've got that set up to collect tolls for the for the communal gardens there. He juts one thumb over his shoulder and goes, yeah, Gary's over there if you want to go talk to him. He's real business minded, so we just follow him. Sure thing. Thank you, young sir. Um, and I saunter over to Gary. All right. Uh, and are you two going to follow Dr. Gill or do you have your own plans to investigate? Well, yeah. So it seems like Dr. Gill is really like already on their side. So like were, <laughs> were we as a group sent here with some kind of like m mandate? Like are we supposed to be defeating these people or are we just kind of like on a fact-finding mission? Well, right now you're on a fact-finding mission because if you recall, the president is the person who originally set you guys up as a squad. Right. But – but now he seems to be kind of like a shady motherfucker. So you guys are like, oh, man, what the fuck's going on here? Because you're you're all uh, agents of justice, after all. Huh. I, sure. I object to that term. Um, <laughs> just, justice is objective, and uh, I uh, thoroughly object. <laughs> is there any way to kick out Mike Nickel from the group? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it, it, to have that happen, you see... Uh, the, uh, the the Atlantic Rangers have a very rigid cast system. It's very traditional stuff, you see. So being a ah. junior man here, you, you can't unfortunately kick out a senior member. But may, maybe if you work a little longer in the organization, work your way up to the top, we can talk about it later. Darn. Huh. Well, <laughs> all right. Um, hmm. Can I go up to one of the goons? You absolutely can. Um, if you approach a goon, you see he's got a... Um, automatic rifle tossed over his shoulder. Um, it doesn't appear to have a magazine in it, so it appears he just likes showing it off to look powerful at this point. Oh, huh, cocky. All right, okay. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yep. Is he white? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there are black libertarians, but I'm going to say they're probably a minority. Most libertarians i've ever known have been not just actually white. they're huge in atlantis it is like the thing to be <laughs> that's yeah that's where all the black libertarians are that's where the they all are no uh, that's why we don't know any of them <laughs> any libertarian atlantis. i've ever known has not only been white but terminally white so that's what you should be looking at terminally here, right? white terminally wow. white i'm into that i'm into yeah. that please yeah. so they're not they're like salt and pepper on their steak is a little too spicy for them kind of white here Damn. Wow. So he's black. So he's black. No, he's white. Then. He's white. White as hell. Ah, okay. Cool. Is he wearing <laughs> handkerchief? 
Uh, he's also wearing a shitty bandana over his face. Huh. So like he tie he's supposed to go over his like his whole nose and stuff to cover his identity, but instead he just has it sitting on his chin or what? It's it's basically <laughs> yeah. along those lines. He's, like he's pulled it like, down. Yeah, basically he got uncomfortable trying to hide his identity and he's like, Well, fuck it. He brought in a note from his doctor to the boss and was like, Hey, I don't have to wear this handkerchief over my face anymore. I got a medical <laughs> exemption. Yeah, I want a medical yeah. exemption. <laughs> okay. The in guy that next to him is like, hey, listen, like we need to cover our dandies. He's like, yeah, but I need to talk. Like, I need to give my demands. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in that case, then can I uh what was it? Can I not approach the goon? Uh I have some reason to suspect that he might be a white supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do what you need to do. You're you you guys drive the story. I just I'm work black, around right? it. Oh yeah, you be whatever you want. If you want well, to I don't black, know if we talked about black. your character's description. What is your or your appearance? What do you look like? Oh, can I just make it up? Yeah, oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right oh, on I'm, the spot. Black. I'm a black guy. You're, you're just a black guy. Cut. Sounds good. Are you a black, black fish guy or just like a black human guy? <laughs> just a black human guy. Uh, black so, human guy. Yes. Mega, are you a white man or a black man? Or a minority? <laughs> oh, uh, no, I feel like that's well established. Because uh, I, I, when I you said you did Josh Hansen, Hartnett, so... I picked Josh Hartnett and then Andrew Garfield. Um, so I'm probably going to say white on this one. Ah, yeah, I also okay. describe myself cool. as like norm core and wearing trendy brands. So <laughs> I feel like I'm pretty pigeonholed into this. Yeah. And do you feel safe approaching the goon? Um, I would say like I should feel safe approaching the goon. Um, wait, sorry. Are you asking my character this? Or are you asking me this? Oh, I'm asking the character this because I'm too, I'm me as a character wouldn't right. approach this character because once again, yeah. white guy carrying a gun. With a, a magazine that's not loaded, still dangerous. No, it's you're right. I have still, to do it's my. It's still uh, at the club waiting to happen. My yes. uh, my Keanu voice for Smegma. <clears throat> oh yeah, you know, uh, I understand it's uh, it's dangerous out here for you, Poseidon. But uh, sorry, can I call you Steve? <laughs> sure, of course. <laughs> I I understand it's dangerous out here for you, Steve, which oh, is why. Well, I, I want to cover your back, you know, like I've got your back. So I'm going to walk 15 feet behind you while you, uh, while you look into this and don't worry. I'll, 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 uh, I'll jump in if I'm needed. Huh? Your character sounds like a bad ally, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, it's not on my character sheet, uh, but Smegma is a huge racist. Uh, yeah, well, it, could, it could, it could cause a problem in this adventure. Boy, uh, I am not ready. Here's the problem, Smega. I think, well, most of the time when, and once again, you know what I mean? Like in recent history, when a European descent man says, follow me, trust me, it hasn't ended well. You know what I mean? For indigenous people, for <laughs> a lot of folks, unfortunately. Name, name one time that hasn't ended well. Wait, hold on. Canonically, is Atlantis part of Europe? I mean, it was... According to Plato, a Greek island, so up in the air? Oh, shit. Okay. That's fair. Because, like, the Greek islands are on the Asiatic Sea, so, like, it's kind of a constant irony. But right. I'm not going to do Should it. Should I I'm be not doing do a Greek lesson. voice then for my character? <laughs> Just smash glasses. That's good enough. Or plates. I don't know. I'm not Greek. All right. Yeah. It's makeup. I'll do you the favor. I will go first. I'll go talk to the goon. All right? Yeah, sounds good. I want I would like to talk to the goon. All right. Uh, he looks over you, and he speaks with a very composed voice, where he goes, Oh, uh, good afternoon. Can I help you? Oh, wow. He seems friendly. Uh, well, uh, what's called the... Uh, I hope you're not one of the racists, but uh, I'm Black Steve, and uh, I would like to keep this land public, open to the public. And I would like you all to kindly pack up your things and uh, return the land back to the community. All right. So with that, I'm going to say, yes, that's probably an uh, understanding role. So do you happen to have two dice with you, or can you open a dice program up on your browser? Of course. Let's do it. Dice. Perfect. Or I can roll for you. No, Kelly, you can only uh, roll for yourself. I'll follow the other girl. And... Sorry, I forgot your name, actually. What was your name? <laughs> Nicole. Nicole, sorry. Yes. I'll follow Nicole's lead and not do it. I rolled uh, two. Okay, so it'll actually be it'll be two D6s, so roll that twice. 
Should I roll one? So roll a uh, uh, sorry, six sided dice twice. Oh, I did that. And I got yeah, two. Yeah, you got oh, two snake oh, eyes. Like one oh. and one. Yeah. Oh, that, okay. okay. So that means with your understanding stat being a two, that's a total of four. I'm gonna say. Well. He pulls the gun out and kills me. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. This is this is a this is a mid level success. So I'm gonna go with. Uh, he looks at you. Goes well. Being that uh, I don't really have the authority to do that. Instead, would you be interested in uh, coming to my open forum sometime to discuss such important topics as how we can further, as libertarians, lower the age of consent? Oh, oh no. Yeah. So, <laughs> and once again, this is my character speaking. Listen, fam. I think I'm good. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go grab you. Boy. I'm gonna grab homeboy in the back, Smega. I think he he might he may align with you a little bit more. I'm gonna go back to wherever I was. You know, what I mean, like I'm just taking a bad turn. Uh, I would seriously, seriously consider maybe getting some help from a doctor. You know, what I mean, I heard there's an emergency room near Atlantis, but uh, Smega, come on up, buddy. Now, for context, the the age of consent in Atlantis is like 34, right? The age of consent in Atlantis is a good, safe age that re respects the health and well-being of all parties involved. Uh, I, honestly, Josh, I'm just having a hard time immersing myself in the world right now. Can you tell me <laughs> canonically what the age of consent in the uh, version of Atlantis you've created is? I don't have the time. And also policy. why? Ah, well, you see, um, being that they are of Greek descent, they kind of have seen what happens in the ancient world when shit like that doesn't happen. So they have very respectful rules, Kelly. Very respectful rules. Hmm. With even adequate Romeo and Juliet clauses, because no kind of legislation should be binary and rigid, but instead developed. Can I roll to change the subject? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. I'm. I'm Actually, I just think I should roll two dice to find out what the age of consent is. I think. I think I think Nicole. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to keep fucking moving, Kelly. I rolled a nine. <laughs> you rolled a nine. Right. Okay. So, uh, no. So he he beckoned me forward. Right. That's what happened. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, so I follow him, and uh, seeing that uh, you know he he clearly wants some uh, some backup in this argument, uh, I you know I put my arm around him and I gesture to the to libertarians and I say, "Listen, my friend here, <laughs> he's this this park is really important. He uses it every day. He hangs out with his family, and if you privatize it, people like him won't be able to spend time here." And don't you want to have more people, people like, like him, him around? <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on. People like him. Fab, we are all human beings. We need to make what do you mean? So you're telling me you ain't ever walk out of your home and be like, damn, I need to go stroll out in the park? He's been chilling in your basement? <laughs> oh, yeah. She's getting hostile. I love it. All right, Kelly, your argument. I need you to roll an understanding. All right. <laughs> Let's uh, see where this goes. I think my understanding is good. I got a plus one. Uh, which brings me up to six. Six. All right. Well, the guy's starting to focus a little bit more. Gee, I wonder why that happens. Uh, it's not like people are shitty or anything. Mm -hmm. And he goes and he goes, you know what? Like, I don't think I can make a call on that. But if you go over and talk to... Wait, is there someone in a, a tight, bright costume already there with the boss? You want to go over... He, he kind of like lose focus. He's like... Kind of starts walking towards the table, which you take as a sort of silent inclination uh, indication to follow him. Do I? Now, yes, that's what okay. you do. <laughs> okay, I do that. Do I follow. That's a real question here. Do I, as a black man, feel safe enough to walk <laughs> in the night with a white guy carrying a sl uh, assault rifle, looking like a white supremacist that just raided the Capitol? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I mean, can I get a gun? I, can I steal a, <laughs> wait, actually, hold up. Can I pull a reverse card and steal the guy's gun? You can absolutely oh. make an attempt to steal this guy's gun. I'm gonna attempt I to need... steal that guy's gun with no magazine and see where it takes me. All right, well, we're gonna need a body roll at that point. So, another 2d6s for you, please. All righty, yo. 
While he's doing that, uh, Josh, do our like Power Ranger, sorry, our not Power Ranger bodysuits like protect us in any way from like ballistics? Yes, when you're shot with ballistics, they give off a shower of sparks, much like when you get punched. Wait, so hold up, Shmega, your first concern was yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said all of your guys' suits, like all of you are protected. Yeah, we're all wearing them. I, like, uh, that, this is my question as a player. I need to know how my character would react in terms yeah. of how much immunity a suit provides him. I, I, mean, I have an idea then. Smega, how about this? You go in front of me. I steal the guy's gun. You take one for the team. How are you feeling about this? See, Nicole agrees. I'm, I'm going to level with you, Steve. Hmm. What's what's our goal here? I'm, our goal I'm, here is the racial equality. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm usually used to fighting from the security and comfort of, of, of like a large metal mech of some kind. And uh, I, I ain't about this. Uh, I ain't about this like street violence. <laughs> street violence. <laughs> you walked up into a park. You saw people. Okay, like park violence. I'm sorry. All right. All right. All right, brother. All right. I'm, I can see that you're not going to be. You're not a good ally. So, <laughs> you know, how about this? Why don't we part ways now? I steal this guy's gun <laughs> and you become a part of the white supremacist. Uh, you know, I just, that also sounds pretty dangerous. Like, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go see if there's a mech around. <laughs> All right, you have fun. All go. right, now, if you're going to steal this gun, we need those two dice rolls, because I am ready yes. to see what happens I got here. a nine. You got a nine? Holy shit, yeah! We're having a party now. Go. With a deft movement that you didn't even know you had, you grab the gun loosely hung over the man's shoulder and pull it back snatching it in one go and actually taking the man off of his feet as the the weight imbalance catches them off guard so he's on the ground now and you have a gun admittedly with no magazine but with a quick glance you see there is indeed one round in the chamber mm. all right i immediately start writing a letter to the editor uh, uh, detailing my opinions on uh, what's uh, why our city is going to shit. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah that, day, that, just, that's what Spang was doing. The other day, I was just walking in the park and I just saw a black man carrying a gun. Our city has really, really gone down. Before that. <laughs> and at the end of the day, and, and in true Mike Nichols style, downtown is unsafe. And, and it's totally not the police's fault. It is completely the fault of the unhoused. Exactly. Well, it yeah, like me. if you look at Smegma's notepad, um, where that he writes his letters to the editor on, like all of them, like you know how sometimes you'll have a notepad that has like something typed on it, like so it's like permanently there. So mm -hmm. he has a whole notebook uh, where all of the pages start with like in ink, I'm not a racist, but, and then you fill in the <laughs> Anyway, so Smeka, I have some bad news for you. You remember how you were a bad ally? Oh no! Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, now, but... Mega, I think uh, I think your time has come to an end, unfortunately. Uh, but, I... here's, the, here's the thing, though. I will barter and trade with you with the Nazis to get that back. Take the park back. What do you think? Uh, I, I look back at him and I say, you know, man, I'm like, uh, I'm really deep in writing this letter right now. Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to take it up with someone else. So I guess I have, so Meg, I have some bad news for you. I had the gun. You don't. <laughs> I, I think the letter get. I think the letter can wait a little bit. So how about this? A, I can kill you. B, you can come and be bartered and traded with. What do you uh, I uh, I put the notepad in my pocket and I'm like, uh, I uh, yeah, I hope you know I know a really good lawyer. And I put my hands up and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just start walking forward because I uh, I have no idea how guns work, so I assume it's loaded. That's ah, fair. cool, perfect. Okay, uh, can I now approach the table? You sure can. And as that happens, we're going to shift perspectives to Dr. Gill approaching that before this all happened, basically. Oh. So Dr. Gill, 
when you approached them, how did you open up dialogue while all this other rigmarole was happening behind? Uh, so Dr. Gill has decided to switch tax. Instead of trying to convince them that this is a good investment for them, I'm going to convince them that the land is totally useless and that they should just sell it to me because just to take it off their hands for them. Um, and I'm going to use all my Southern charm and all my businessman status and everything I learned being a fake psychologist. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'll get you. You have the libertarians at switch tax. <laughs> I have an idea. All right. So first. Understanding roll, Dr. Gill. Uh, yeah, I rolled a seven, plus I have a plus two, so that's a nine. Plus, I'm going to say you uh, take out your fake psychiatrist or psychologist degree and sort of like as you're walking towards the table, you kind of, you trip like like you're trying to like accidentally drop something like, oh, sorry, I just dropped my degree I have, <laughs> <laughs> which gives you an additional point to give it an e even ten. So, Neat. so our uh, our head goon, who I think I named Gary, but I've already forgotten. It was Gary. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I never forget a name and never forget a face. All of these goons are named I Gary. I never forget a handshake. Yeah. Gary or Jason. <laughs> Gary. Gary. <laughs> that's, that's all we have here. So he is entranced by your argument. He's convinced that he, despite the fact that there are very healthy fruits and vegetables growing behind him, as well as a couple cannabis plants, Legalization came forward about three years ago. Do you mean seaweed? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> do the little laugh. Come on, do the little laugh. Yeah, Kelly. Come Callie, on, Kelly. Callie. Give, give, give her the laugh. Come on, Kelly. <laughs> I have to. Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to team me up again? Do you mean seaweed? <laughs> There we go. Thank you. That was actually a good pun. I'll give you mad credit for that one. I thought of that one at the beginning of the game, and I was like, it's going to come up. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, he seems very entranced and is ready to open up dialogue. But then he looks over your shoulder. He goes, what the fuck is going on over there? Boys, I need to go check that out. And so his two goons beside him run behind you to sort of see what's happening as... Black Steve Poseidon and Smegma Glans are walking up to the table, Smegma with his hands up and Black Steve Poseidon holding a gun that doesn't have a magazine in it. But are does you differentiating him from a different Steve Poseidon that's in the same room? No, he said his name was Black Steve, so his name's Black, Black Steve Poseidon. <laughs> right. All right. How far am I from the table? You right now, as it stands, are about 20 or so feet away. Cool. Okay. Well, as we all know, black people are superior runners. So let's say in this, <laughs> let's say in this uh, particular moment, I am a, what's called, I am, a, what's that guy's name? The guy that did running so fast. Usain Bolt? Donovan Bailey. Yes, I am. I have become Usain Bolt temporarily. And <laughs> I have dashed to the table. And instead of taking the head goon, I have decided to take Dr. Again. Gill. Oh, no. Okay. Negotiate yeah. from me. <laughs> and I go, I can't help but think that I had this coming. <laughs> you know, so, you know uh, something that my dad always told me is that the smartest people surround themselves with smart people. So if you're a good negotiator, I got to surround myself with you. So you here have done a terrible job with this. <laughs> me? Yeah. How? I took I'm surrounding yourself with smart people? <laughs> We're all idiots. <laughs> <You> look around. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, I mean, sometimes you got to take a break. Am That's I still fair. in front of you with my hands up? Is that what's happening? No, no, he, he's oh. darted past you now. I darted past you. You know what I mean? It's already, you, like, blink your eyes, I'm gone. I already okay. have a new character. You're like the real Josh Hartnett in that you're not relevant anymore. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm just, like, looking around at other people in the in the room and just kind of saying, like, oh. it's not what it looks like. Uh, I have a lot of black friends. <laughs> God. Oh God! Jesus, wow. I am not Jesus. a racist. <laughs> but, but anyway, it's always the but. The but it is. always. I, I feel like if you ever started or like are starting a sentence with a "I'm not a but," you should just probably not say that sentence. <laughs> but I am not a but. <laughs> so, yeah. Doctor Gill, now that you have a gun pointed to the back of your head. What is yeah, your yeah. what is your response? Um. So I put my hands up and I go. Well, hi there, yeah. young sir. Uh, what's uh, 
what seems to be what seems to be the problem here? What do you what can I do for you? And well, I put on my most winning smile. Well, my first question is, why when a black man pulls up a gun, why do you all put your hands up? <laughs> like honestly, like like logistically speaking, what is that gonna do? Like really, like I'll be honest, like I am not expecting Mr. Slumdog Millionaire to be carrying a gun mm-hmm. in his in his back pocket and being like, ah, caught you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, no, nevertheless, though, what's called, uh, well, unfortunately, uh, see, I had somewhat of a more character that couldn't help me with my needs. And I think from seeing what's happening in the background here, I think you, Dr. Gill, can help me achieve my goal of keeping this park public and by any means necessary. Absolutely. That's, uh, I am a businessman. Convincing people of things is my entire job. Absolutely. Um, all right, so uh, what do you, what do you want to do? Should we should we talk to Mr. Gary here and see what we can do? Oh no, I want you to put up your money to buy the land from him. Then just hand me over the trust, and then don't you worry, I'll hand you back to your family. You know, what I mean, this could be a very simple transaction for all. Of us. Oh, you know what? I, I I don't make a habit of giving up money. Um, you don't make a habit of giving up money. I don't make a habit <laughs> of killing people. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I do think that my wife uh, Robin uh, as you all know she's on my show quite frequently. Uh, as my my wife Robin would, would be quite sad if I didn't make it home tonight. So um, I suppose I best go along with this whole plan. Um, I suppose so. Okay. Like I said, gotta surround myself with smart people. <laughs> Keep my brains in my mustache. <laughs> you know, I'm not reconsidering my options. <laughs> uh oh. <uh-oh. laughs> So at this point, uh, Smegma, who comes from a long, long line of uh, hysterical paranoid suburbanites, uh, like his, like, almost genetic instincts just kick in. And, uh, you know, he, he's he's been in, like, adrenaline mode ever since the, the guns came out and is just, like, has not been even hearing any of the discussion that's been happening. And given the fact that he's standing behind all this decides to uh do a flight or flight thing and just like puts his hands down pulls out his wallet throws it at steep aside and says just take it man just take it and runs out the door just bolts as far away as possible all right so that happens uh, uh Do- dr gill immediately grabs the wallet and starts rifling through it <laughs> all right uh, you know and here's the thing too i'll be honest like what's called, like like and like, and this is like a real life feeling what's called like whenever i'm like whenever i'm walking behind someone i feel as if like i'm being like i'm like constantly stared at you know what i mean and like and like i'm once again like i am just legitimately minding my own business like i don't know like honestly too you know i mean like there's so many different examples of people like thinking they're getting robbed even though the person behind him is just walking straight, you know what I mean? Just, just doing their shit. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, I just look course. like a mean dude, so nobody fucks with me, which is funny, and I enjoy that. Yeah. You say you look like a mean dude? Apparently, I do. When I'm just walking, I got I got mad resting bitch face. Mm-hmm. Like I could be thinking about like I'm like I'm gonna make pizza rolls when I get home. This is great, and I just look pissed off. So. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, though. Uh, Sorry, where were we at? Um, we've, uh, we've gotten we've gotten Smegma's wallet. Doctor Gill is about to sign a check to uh, to buy the land from this uh, libertarian fella. Yeah, I'm signing the check. As I'm signing the check, I say, um, "Well, you know, it's not the first uh, you know bad investment that I made, and I probably won't get a lot of returns on it. But Oprah still got my back, so." <laughs> what investment? This is my line. You buying my line? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I'm going to need a check for some side money just for this whole arrangement. <laughs> oh, no. I hope so. Just is this like a question. special Atlantean underwater version of Oprah, or is this just like regular Oprah that Dr. Gill is hooked up with? Yeah, her, uh, like her, her, you know how she had the, like, in real world or in our universe, she has the, the uh, TV show or the television program or whatever network called Harpo. It's the mm-hmm. same, but it's Harpoon. Because <laughs> they're underwater, that's the yeah, joke. That's the joke. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess yeah. I'm... No, no, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So as you are about to hand that check to the libertarian, it's like time slows down, and you begin to hear a rumble. 
and then a crack and then the ear splitting roar as the earth around you begins to almost explode and you oh, feel no. like you feel like the land itself is moving now the island itself is beginning to float and stand up from the bottom of the seabed that you found yourself on I the go. entirety of the island looks to be underneath a set of legs <gasps> And that's where we'll cut it. That's the end of the episode. And okay. That's the end of the episode. Man, though. It's way harder great. to dance to that one. It's not very jaunty. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy because we haven't had that much action since I think uh, a couple of our guests gouged out some man's eyeballs with a uh, with an ice cream scoop. So I was pretty happy there. I was, was really excited for that. Pardon mm -hmm. me? Was that Giselle who did that? No, uh, Giselle no. would never gouge out an eye. <laughs> what did she do? I think she was just a good negotiator, if I'm remembering correctly. She was, I remember, I don't remember what she did, but I remember her being very kind and sweet in all of her interactions. interactions. Like, it didn't yeah. matter how unreasonable or shitty everyone else was being, she was like... <laughs> yeah, that, it was pretty on brand in that respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yes. that was awesome. Thank you all for playing today. Yeah, thanks for jamming. Yeah, thanks so much and for reaching out. This is fun. I loved it. Oh, good. I'm glad. It was great to have you on. Yeah. So yeah I, think we, I, I think in the future we can learn from that because we started the game a bit late, ended a bit early, and still got more done. And I think the answer is if you just take out a gun and start threatening people, things will happen. Exactly. I think and, we just that's, that's exactly how the real world should work. You know, and I mean, that's the lesson that you, the viewer, can take away as well. <laughs> yeah. In official, Minecraft. Official stance of the show. Just take it and start threatening people with guns. Exactly. I should be able to walk into Rideau College and become the next <laughs> prime minister. <laughs> you know I mean? No Perfect. problem. In fact, actually. You know, if you had put that on your election platform website, I absolutely would have voted for <laughs> Ah, awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, then, right. we'll have to do that next time. Next time, run for city council. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, we'll for look now, forward gonna, to seeing your next run. I'm yeah. going to steal the role of the host today and say, do you have any uh, platforms that we can check you out on? Uh, uh, we're me? being usurped. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I got uh, what's called... Uh, one of the good things about being an election candidate is that you synchronize all your different things. So uh, what's called... Uh, yeah, all my tags are Haroon Yeg, and I'm on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram, and Reddit, and... Uh, yeah, and Reddit. <laughs> Unfortunately. Perfect. So, yeah. Uh, can you make a banner for that, Kelly? Because I am incompetent. There we go. Yeah, I was in banner yeah. mode. And sorry, did you say that you made, like, all of your, like, your tags and your identities match each other so you're easy to find? Yes. No, I'm going to have to write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> it's so you told so me that before. Honestly, you you didn't, and I'll be honest too. You don't know the half of it. One of the biggest things that gets me too is when candidates don't match their photos and names. To different, so like, well, the, some of them will do is like they have like they have different things on it, but uh, just it, it, it's harder for people to find them. But nevertheless, so honestly, I'm really thankful for this opportunity to chat with y'all. Y'all were mm -hmm. awesome, uh, Doctor Gill. Uh, what's it called once again? No hard feelings. You know, what I mean, like it's okay. Uh, lots of people get stuck up in the robbery. <laughs> I appreciate them. All. Uh, and uh, sorry, what was your what was your character? Omega, right? Smegma. Sure. Oh, Smegma. Yeah. <laughs> you should have been named Omega. Omega would have been a great name. But Smegma. Well, you're thinking our characters because you had a good time. I thought you were thinking us because you had a good time. But Omega, once again, no hard feelings. You sure. are a very valuable person. But unfortunately, because you are a white supremacist, I had to let you go. You're a big liar. <laughs> so. Understandable. And what's I'm not a white supremacist. I'm just like a keep the quiet part quiet racist. I'm, I'm like a stalker mom racist. Ah, I see. That's the worst kind. <laughs> Maybe not the worst kind, but definitely a bad kind. Yeah. But hey, nevertheless, uh, I'm going to pop out. I got to get out of here before they come kick me up. But y'all have a wonderful evening. Take care and stay safe. All right. Thank Take you. care. Thanks again. All right, thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right, so we have so, two and a half minutes before we shut this bad boy down. If I, I just want to make sure I followed this. So our characters who are collectively maybe not 
the best toward him. He thanked us for showing him a great time and that he enjoyed connecting. Yeah. And so he had a worse time with us as real human <laughs> beings. I think that's, that's definitely what we should take from this. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So, well, I mean, since we have, I mean, if we really want to flush out the whole two hours, because you know we'll get in trouble from someone if we don't. Uh, I think it's a good time to publicly announce that we're retiring uh, the show pun name bit um, after much group deliberation. Um, and, uh, you know, due to the joke having run its course, and it's certainly not because no one liked it. <laughs> certainly not. Um, so what I thought might be good uh, was just to go through the remain some of the remaining puns I had on uh, on the title "Born Under Punches," and uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can just uh, you can give me some thumbs up and thumbs down on them, or uh, you know, I don't know. What do you think? I yep. mean, yeah, you got you got a minute and ten seconds to sell us on this one. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like the only one that had any legs on it was Barn Drummer's Gumption. I thought there was there there was room to work with that. I could I could see that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, a lot of these when I wrote them down, I had an idea where I was going to go with them, and I don't understand what my story was going to be for Boar Plunder Function. Boar. Uh, Boar Plunder Function. Boars in B O A R. B O A R like the animal. Yeah, like I mean, uh, uh, you could be like when there's that whatever thirty to forty feral hogs meme going around. It could have mm -hmm. been a bunch of these feral hogs like plundering an area. Uh, I don't know. Got got fifteen seconds yet, Kelly? To sell us on the last one here. I'm thinking. Uh, hold on, I got I got one for Bort. Okay. Okay. So yeah, something about robot robot male pigs, um, and they. You know how they like dig in the dirt for truffles, but well, their horns. The one, one of them, he was running through a fence, and his horns unfortunately broke off, and so he lost his boar plunder function. Yeah, that one's not too bad. Uh, I, I also liked the idea of this one, Gord Mutter Stunts, but it had a lot to do with having to have seen like a very specific Firefly episode, and. Uh, you know, like uh, I, I think that, I think this uh, there was a lot of uh, I didn't give enough credit to burnt umber brushes, which you know you could make like an art school story out of that. Oh yeah, there's a Bob Ross joke in there somewhere. Yeah, but I mean the remaining like fifteen or so that I have here, I don't know. I don't think they should ever see the light of day. Hey, it's a creative process, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, and luckily, much like the Queen. They never will see the light of day again. Sorry, that was a dead queen. Nicole, that would have been so good if you just like hit the outro as soon as.